Good evening, and let's have some fun. The question of the day is, does vitamin D treat multiple sclerosis, and should you take it? This video is brought to you by Biogen. I'm just kidding. Screw Biogen. This video is brought to you by Ann McNabb, who posted the question in the comments of one of my prior videos. And if you have a question, please post it in the comments below, and I'll try to get around to answering it. Now, let's get on to the evidence. There's a clear link between sun exposure and vitamin D levels. But if you look at identical twins where one has MS and the other does not, discordant identical twins, the one that does not have MS tends to report that during childhood they had more sun exposure and potentially higher levels of vitamin D. If you look at pregnant women, women who have lower vitamin D during pregnancy have a higher risk of MS in their children. Those with the highest quintile of vitamin D levels had 41% decreased risk. If you look at people who take vitamin D supplements, they have a lower risk of MS by about 33%. Now, this is all retrospective data. However, in a brilliant Mendelian randomization study, this is a study where they looked at the genes that predispose higher levels of vitamin D, they found that people who had a genetically determined higher level of vitamin D by 50% had a 50% decreased risk of MS. So they had vi higher vitamin D not based on what they did, but based on their genes, so there could be no confounders. What if you look at people with clinically isolated syndrome? These are people who had a single inflammatory event of the nervous system and are at high risk of developing multiple sclerosis. If you look at people with CIS who had a vitamin D level greater than 50 nanomoles per liter, they actually had a lower risk of developing MS compared to those who had a vitamin D level less than 50 nanomoles per liter. What if you look at people with MS? Those with higher levels of vitamin D, again greater than 50, tend to make less lesions on their MRI scans compared to people with lower levels of vitamin D. What if you just follow people with MS and wait until they have their first relapse? Well, if you're looking at people with higher levels of vitamin D, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer on average because the time to first relapse is longer on average. This is a study uh, looking at a multivariate analysis. The size of the bubble is correlated with the degree of precision of that particular study. And you can see that there's a clear correlation between vitamin D level and rate of relapses. And they looked at every variable they could imagine and tried to account for it. And indeed, there is a theoretical reason why vitamin D might have this effect. We know that vitamin D reduces autoreactive T cells. In other words, it reduces the T cells that seem to have autoimmune potential. The gene that is most linked to multiple sclerosis, HLA-BRB1501, is known to be modulated by vitamin D. In other words, vitamin D binds to and interacts with this gene. We also know that vitamin D shifts the inflammatory profile towards a TH2 or T helper cell type 2 profile. Interestingly, this is exactly what beta interferon do, the drugs that treat multiple sclerosis. I know, you're a skeptic. You want to see the real data. What about the randomized trials? Okay, I'll show you. This is a meta-analysis of five randomized trials giving people with MS vitamin D and seeing how they do and they found absolutely no effect whatsoever. And if you look at the odds ratio on the right of the screen, you'll see that the average of the five studies centers exactly on one. In other words, no increased or decreased rate of relapses whatsoever. Now, these were small studies. Not all of them had great methodology. They used different doses of vitamin D. But a recent evidence-based Cochrane review concluded, primarily based on this type of data, there's really no clear evidence that we should be telling our patients to take vitamin D. Why might this be? Vitamin D is linked to MS, but giving it to our patients doesn't do anything? Well, there are potential confounders. One of them is latitude, which is linked to sun exposure and vitamin D levels, may be linked to other things. People in more northern latitudes tend to have a different diet. Possibly they consume more saturated fat, which has been correlated with MS risk. We also know that behavior correlates with sun exposure, but it also correlates with other things. In Western societies, we know that people tend not to go out in the sun as much, but they also have lower rates of parasite exposure. And we think that parasite exposure in early childhood may have a role in modulating the immune system and may actually reduce the risk of autoimmune diseases. And that's why developing countries have lower rates of autoimmune diseases. 
Now there's some direct effects of sunlight as well. And this is an interesting field known as photoimmunology. For example, sunlight induces certain anti-inflammatory factors, such as interleukin-10 and interleukin-4. We know that sunlight causes dendritic cells to develop a tolerogenic phenotype and to migrate to the lymph nodes. And in a brilliant study done in Germany, they took mice and they knocked out their vitamin D receptors. So they were essentially immune to vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D did nothing in these mice. But they gave them ultraviolet light. And the ultraviolet light still affected the immune system. It still caused immunosuppression and immunomodulation. So that means that sunlight has a vitamin D independent effect on the immune system. Now, this is the MS Sunshine study. And the primary investigator of this study was Dr. Annetta Langer Gould, who happens to be my former fellowship mentor. And she found that vitamin D is only really linked to MS in Caucasians. If you look at African Americans and Hispanics, low vitamin D is not linked to MS whatsoever. But she did find that low lifetime sun exposure is linked to MS risk. And she measured this ingeniously by taking pictures of people's skin and counting the wrinkles, which are known to correlate with lifetime sun exposure. Here is her data, and you, you can see on the top that sun exposure does correlate with MS risk. And it was statistically significant in all groups except Hispanics. But only Caucasians had a statistically significant link between low vitamin D and MS risk. Now to the conclusion. Do I, Dr. Bieber, recommend that my patients with MS take vitamin D in light of this data? Of course I do, let's not go crazy here. Low vitamin D is linked to MS. Low vitamin D is linked to worse prognosis MS. Vitamin D is generally safe with relatively few side effects. The only time I might exercise some caution is someone who has a history of calcium containing kidney stones and a few other select medical conditions. But given the safety of vitamin D and the other medical benefits associated with vitamin D, I don't really see a good reason not to recommend it. In fact, I personally take 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 once a day, just in case.